I'm not laid up in no hospital bed. But when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, can we all stand for intercessory? Oh, my, 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 my. Through all the hell that we went through all week, I believe somebody came in here with a praise this morning. Not just on their lips, but in their feet. Oh, my God, praise confuses the enemy. But one thing prayer does is it sure reaches God. And that's what we're going to do this morning because I think somebody need a healing. Somebody need a miracle. Oh, okay, don't none of y'all need a miracle. I need one. And somebody need deliverance. I know I need deliverance. So we're going to go before the throne boldly. God, would you, would you please stand? Would you please stand if you're able to stand? Father God, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we come before the throne boldly right now, giving you all the glory and giving you all the praise. Oh God, for you are truly deserving, God. Oh God, we come to you pulling on the hem of your garment this morning, God. Just like the woman in the Bible, God. She had enough faith that she said, if I touch the hem of your garment, then I know that everything will be all right. I know that I'll be healed. I know that I'll get a miracle. I know that I'll receive my deliverance. And so, God, we're pulling on the hem of your garment this morning. And God, just like Jacob, God, we won't let you go till you bless us. And God, even when you bless us, we still won't let you go. Because God, it's in you that we live. It's in you that we have moved. And it's in you that we have our being. God, we need some things from you that only you can do. You are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the bright and morning star, the lily in the valley. God, this is what you are. You're omnipotent, God. You're, you're immutable, God. You're all-powerful. You're all-seeing. And God, we need you to do this thing for us this morning, God. God, we need you to live liver us, God. God, we need a miracle this morning, God. God, someone come in here, God, with some health problems. But God, in greater works, the city that we call greater. The glory is in this place this morning. And God, if we just reach up and grab it, somebody shout, I can get my miracle today. I can get my healing today. God, healing is in the room. Miracles are in the room. Deliverance is in the room. Come on, I wish I had somebody pray with me. God, we thank you right now for keeping us through danger seen and unseen. But God, we pray for our community. We pray for our neighborhood. We pray for our city. We pray for our state. We pray for our nation. God, touch our president. Send someone to him, God. God, that will tell him the truth, God. God, we pray that you would deliver them, God. God, we pray for our world, God. Send revival in the name of Jesus. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Every tongue will confess. At the name of Jesus, demons tremble. I cancel every demon of schizophrenia in the supernatural. We will not leave the same way we came. But I declare love. I declare unity. I declare togetherness. I declare peace. I declare all oh my God in our households, in our lives, in our communities, in the state, in the nation. I declare and decree supernatural. Oh my God, peace like never before. I declare divine revelation. I declare that the church is getting its power back. God, thank you for greater works. Thank you for the city we call greater. Keep releasing revelation. Keep releasing knowledge. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Bless our pastor. Give him revelation like never before. Strengthen him and his lords. Keep him going. Keep him afloat. We cover him in the name of Jesus. As he's here, as he's in Houston, when he goes to Nigeria, let the power fall on him like never before. Let the glory follow like never before. Because in your presence, there is everything. And we thank you. We thank you. 
God, we pray for your people. Uh, a greater works. Uh, I release miracles. Uh, I do release healing. Uh, I declare uh, that no longer uh, will we be the same. Uh, but after today, uh, our whole lives uh, have shown us change. Uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, I declare and decree uh, financial uh, prosperity. Uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, the demon of lack, uh, the demon of poverty, uh, the Lord is against you. Uh, and we say notice uh, that we are walking in uh, the land of more than enough. Uh, too much, uh, too much. Uh, Overflow, so much overflow and cheap. To the marvelous life, laid my feet on straight street, gave me eternal life. He gave me clothes on my back, food on my table. I know, I know, ooh, I'm left. Yeah. 
Hey, y'all come on and clap your hands. <laughs> Anybody know you're blessed out there while you're fellowship? Wave at me if you know you're blessed. No, he woke you up this morning and started you on your way. Somebody ought to scream, I'm blessed. <laughs> Touch somebody close and tell them, I'm blessed. Hallelujah. <laughs> Could have been dead. Do I have any witness? Come on, clap your saints of a hand. Sleeping in my grave. But the Lord, I owe him the praise. Oh, he gave me clothes on my back, food on my table. I know I'm left. Oh. Come on, clap them sanctified hands if you really know that you're blessed. Anybody come to have good old sanctified church this morning? You ought to be standing on your feet and clapping your hands. Let's go higher and let's go higher. Let's go higher. Hallelujah. Mm, yes. Come on and say, y'all, I'm blessed. I am. I'm blessed. Wonder can I get one witness? I wonder can I get one witness? I wonder can I say, I'm blessed. I am. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I am. I'm blessed. Come on and clap your hands. I am, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I am, I'm blessed. Ooh, blessed. I am, I'm blessed. Come on and clap your hands. I am, I'm blessed. Ooh, I'm blessed. I am, I'm blessed. People that I'm waiting on y'all. Oh, I'm blessed. Oh, I'm blessed. I am. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I am. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I am. I'm blessed. I know I'm blessed. I am. I'm blessed. Me this morning, oh, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I am. 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 I'm blessed. table Tell him I'm blessed just like that. He woke me this morning, gave me strength in my body. Somebody holler at your boy, say, I'm blessed. I bet somebody clap them sanctified hands. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Come on, stand all over this place and lift your hands to the Lord this morning. I if it's not pleasing to you, take it out of me. If it's not pleasing to you, take it out of me. Come on, everybody say, if it's not pleasing, take it out of me. Have your way, have your way. If it's not pleasing, pleasing to you, take it out of me. If it's not pleasing, if it's not pleasing to you, take it out, take it out of me. If it's not pleasing, if it's not pleasing, take it out of me. Have your way, have your way. Overflow, overflow in 
this place. Have your way in this place. We want more, more in this place. Have your way. Overflow. John chapter 2. Thank you, officers, and thank you, ushers. Thank you to our staff, choir, wonderful. Thank you, team of band members. Thank you. Praise the Lord. How many know that this is the day that the Lord has made? And we should what? Rejoice. We should what? Rejoice, Rejoice and be glad in it. Praise the Lord. St. John chapter 2, there's a word I want to lift up to you. And the series of messages that will come from the pulpit will be centered around our church anniversary theme. And that is out of, out of the Psalm 40, 9 and 10, which concludes that we are a great congregation. Y'all left me out there by myself. I said, we are a great congregation. Y'all don't know when to shout. We are, we are a great congregation. Come on, put your fist in your neighbor's face. Say, we are mighty. And we are a great congregation. That's our theme this year. Every church goes through evolutions. They have high points and low points, just like life. Church is like life. It's not how you handle the high moments that make you. It's how you handle the low moments. And God has kept us. Oh, my God. I said God has kept us. And sometimes we ask the question, is God still with greater works? Then we go buying land. Y'all help me here. Owning homes and starting businesses. Is God with us? We are. Y'all help me. A great. Y'all left me out here by myself. Congregation. Praise the Lord. St. John chapter 2, verse 13 and through verse 22. And when it was almost time for the Jewish Passover, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple courts, he found people selling cattle, sheep and doves, and others sitting at the table exchanging money. So he made a whip out of some cords and drove all of the temple courts, both sheep, and cattle him. He scattered the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. And to those who sold those, he said, get your butt out of here. Y'all ain't gonna say amen. Stop turning the father's house into a marketplace. Verse 17, his disciples remembered when he had written, the zeal of the house will consume me. Let me take my time reading it. The zeal of God's house consumes me. And that there's a lot of people who attend church but don't have zeal for the church. And Jesus says, the zeal of God's house. I wish I had somebody help me who loves the house of prayer. The zeal of God's house. Oh, has uh, consumed me. The, and 18 says, and so uh, the Jews then responded to him, what sign can he show us to prove his authority to do this? And Jesus said, destroy this temple and I will raise it again in three days. They replied, if it took us 46 years to do it, hallelujah. And you are going to raise it in three days? But the temple he spoke of was not the church. It was the body. And after he was raised from the dead, his disciples recalled what he said. Then they believed the scripture and the words that Jesus had spoken. I want to raise up again out of verse 18. The zeal of God's house has consumed me. On your way to your seat, would you hit the wig off your neighbor and tell him, I'm just in love with the local church. <laughs> uh, that, that's what I want to talk about. I'm in love with the local church. I'm in love 
uh, with a local church. Would you lean over to your left and say, did you hear what the black boy said? I'm in love. Y'all finish it with <laughs> the local church. Thank God for the local church. I said, thank God for the local church. One more time, thank God, thank God. <laughs> for the local church. The first thing that I want you to pay attention to the text, I won't be long before you got to get it. The first thing that you must recognize in the text is Jesus' approach. It's Jesus' approach to the tabernacle. And my brothers and sisters, the first thing that we understand in understanding our Amen. He, he wouldn't have been one of those who come in 15 after, 30 minutes after, an hour after. Jesus sets the tone of how we ought to approach the house of prayer. And we ought to approach the house of prayer, everybody say early. early. That's what he does. He understands approaching the house of prayer early because when you do that, you recognize the timing of God. David declares that early, y'all help me, will I seek thee there is something about seeking the Lord early. Some of us wait until we get in trouble. We wait until things are bad. We wait until life has handled us trouble, and then we call on God. But I heard mama say, before you get in it, why not have a little talk with Jesus? And I tell you, he'll make everything. I need some help up in here. All right. Somebody holler, I got to talk to him early. I talk to him early because it's then, Brother Rainey, I understand the timing of God's program in the earth. And if you are connected to God, then what remains sensitive to him should be important to you. Notice Jesus' approach. Now, write these scriptures down and read them in your quiet time. St. Luke 19, verse 47. The Bible says that when Jesus would go to the temple daily, he went early. Mark chapter 1 verse 35 write that down. It says that when he went to the house of God to pray he went early. Y'all gonna get it in a minute. St. Luke chapter 24 says that even when Jesus got up from the grave he got up. Y'all ain't got no help in here. He got up early at the break of day. The approach is everything. There's some ladies in here. Let me park you parenthetically to ask you, is the approach of a man to you important? You would say, yes, it is. If a man walks up on you and says, hey, boo thing, can I have you? Nine times out of ten, if you're a classy lady, you say, get out of my face. Y'all ain't going to say amen. But if he comes up to you and says, ma'am, my name is Webster, and I was inquiring about you, and I wanted to come over here and meet you. And I just wanted to take a moment, ma'am, and ask you, is it okay if we sit down and have a conversation? You say, oh, Webster, all right. <laughs> you was watching me, Webster, yes. And your approach. Watch this. Everybody say the approach is important. And, and some of us want to God to do great things in our lives, but we have the wrong approach. My God, showing up late, you want God's blessings. Y'all ain't going to say amen. And, and this is what the text is concluding, that the approach to the house of prayer is always notable in Scripture. Because, watch this, when you early, you're coming with expectation. That's, that's what happened when a man picks a woman up on a date. He don't ride up in there 15, 20 minutes, especially not no black woman. Y'all ain't going to say, man, if he late, the whole night messed up. The food don't taste good. She got an attitude. Y'all ain't going to say amen to this. Uh, but when he wants something in the night, he gets there early and he waits on her. He opens the door for her. He smiles at her. And she don't even, he don't even know that when she look at him, she's saying, boo-boo, you in trouble tonight <laughs> because you you knew how to approach a sister and a sister is going to reward you because of your approach. Scoot up close church. Let me tell you this. When you treat God with putting him first, when you treat God with coming to the house of God with early, what does early mean? Write this down. Early simply means expectation. 
Now, if you don't want nothing, you ain't going to get nothing. But I just want to see parenthetically, are there about two, about five or six witnesses that are in here with me that will wave your hand and say, I come to get something this morning. I didn't come. Y'all ain't going to help me in this house. Somebody holler, have an expectation. An expectation, write this down, is a strong belief, a deacon Scott, that something will happen. Uh, 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 expectation simply means something will happen. That, that's what expectation means. And the text says that when you approach the house of God with expectation, then what the Lord does, uh-huh, what the Lord does, yes, uh, what the Lord does, mm-hmm, when you come, I got help now, yes, come to the house of God, mm-hmm, with expectation, uh-huh, God will, yes, meet you, uh-huh, with elevation. Y'all... And see, y'all sitting by somebody that don't have any, my God. But if you're sitting by anybody who come to the house of prayer with expectation, hit them on the hip and say, God's getting ready to take you higher. <laughs> what is the word, pastor, for elevation? Elevation is when God causes a raising of what the Bible says, consecrated elements. Everybody say consecrated. See, coming to the house of God is not you coming to get ready. You got to come already ready. Now, some of y'all looking at me mighty smooth, but I ain't never seen nobody go to the club not already ready. Y'all, help me. I see them down there. Y'all at the gas station already getting lit. Y'all ain't going to say, man, getting ready to go to the club. Bro got his shirt open with his taco meat out on his shirt. Y'all ain't going to say, girl in there got her dress on. She getting ready. Y'all, y'all better come get me. I'm trying to help you because if we can go to the club already ready, then we should come to the church already. Already. Look down your row and say, if I got to make you praise them, maybe you should go to the club. Y'all ain't going to say amen. But when you go to the club and the music starts playing and, and I'm already ready, y'all ain't going to help me here. I, y'all, I dare 10 crazy people jump up on your feet and say, ready, 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 y'all. Y'all sit down. Expectation, Pastor Watson, simply means this, that, that I am coming because there is something I know that is going to happen good for me. Yeah. Is that anybody's cry this morning? As I park here, Lady Blanche, you're believing before I leave, God's going to make something better. Anybody believe in before you leave, God can touch your body and bring that blood pressure down where it's supposed to be. I come expecting I said I come expecting I come brother Harold with an expectation you may didn't come to get anything sister Cannon but I come ha I come yeah with an expectation hey amen touch your name say as cute as you are I didn't come to see you till I, I come brother Foley oh my god I come with expectation. And God says when you come in the house of the local church with expectation, he will match it with elevation. Uh, some of y'all are too new to this, but I've got some old saints in here that remember a song that says every round goes higher. Y'all, yes, y'all ought to help me here. That, that means every time I come, I ought to, ought to go a little higher than I was last time. And, and can I tell you, my brothers and sisters, where that song originates from? See, the local church is supposed to put you at a place that wherever you come in at, no matter how low you come in, when you leave, you ought to leave higher than you came. Shame on you if you hear all this singing. Shame on you if you hear a word like this and you leave, get in the parking lot. Y'all ain't going to say, man, face toe up like you've been sucking on sour lemons, mad at the world, gossiping about what happened. No, the local church is meant that when you come in with expectation, God will give you elevation. Yeah, that's it now. Uh huh. That's that's where they got to him. Uh, that every round goes higher and higher. 
uh, yeah, they, they got the hymn and wrote it for the church, Deacon Blesser, because they get it from Genesis when the Bible talks about Jacob's ladder. How oh, I need help here. <laughs> Bible says, and Jacob ha, was headed back home. Home was Jerusalem. It was the place that they called the house of God. And while Jacob, my brothers and sisters, was on his way, the Bible says he caught sleep on a rock. And God gave him a dream. And what he dreamed, Brother Michael, he dreamed about a ladder. Oh, God. Somebody holler, I'm dreaming about ladders. Uh, the ladder was the fact that the ladder connected the earth to the heaven. Y'all don't know. And while he was dreaming, he said this. While my prayers was going up one side of the ladder, uh, angels was coming down the other side of the ladder. Uh, Y'all, I feel like preaching this morning. In other words, if you came with expectation and came to send up prayers, uh, God said, before you leave, uh, I see an angel with your answered prayer uh, coming down the same ladder. brothers and sisters do you have any expectation from God did you come to offer up prayers ah, praise the Lord somebody shout hallelujah how do I know I should be higher the text says brother bless always simply says this look at the text in verse 13 it says and Jesus next two words went up y'all miss this wherever he came in when he was going to leave Jerusalem, he was going to leave Sister Pam higher than he came. I need y'all to be some Bible readers in here. Somebody holler and say higher. higher. That's what the text is indicating, and that is what is taking place. And I don't know about you, but when I come to the church, I don't come to sit down. I don't come to frown. I don't come to clown. I don't come to be bound. I don't come to look around. Y'all don't like this. But I come to go up and to go in. Oh, I just need a few witnesses in here. Somebody wave your hand and said, I'm going up. And when I get there, I'm going in. This is a good point to praise, isn't it? Right here, huh? Somebody holler, I'm going up and I'm going in. I need 10 crazy young people jump up on your feet and say, Lord, take me higher. Higher, higher, higher. Come on, touch somebody beside and say, you ain't leaving the same way you came higher. Uh-huh, get up, clown. I'm God's getting, oh my God. And you didn't come to look around, but it says, I come to look to the hill. Help me, Sister Blanche, which cometh my help. I said, in all of my help. Woo. Somebody holler, hey. I, 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 I. I. I come, I come, because I believe something's going to happen. That by the time uh -huh, I leave church, God is working on my behalf. And he's going to take me higher than I was before I came. Do I have any witnesses out there? Somebody holler, higher. That, that's, that, that's, that's, that's what he's saying. That's, that's the expectation uh-huh, of Jesus understanding the Passover. He's coming to Jerusalem because of the timing of God. It was the Passover time, my brothers and sisters, and the expectation of Passover was for two purposes. Write these down. The first reason that he came to the Jerusalem for Passover was, number one, for celebration. Now, some of you are not Bible readers, but I'm going to give it to you and try to be a good pastor to you. Deuteronomy 16 verse 1 you can write that down Deuteronomy 16 I feel help here uh, verse 1 says it like this it says every month you should set aside the time to celebrate the Passover he said he said you got to take time to celebrate the Passover because watch this only those who celebrate the Passover claim Jesus to be their Lord 
Now, there may be somebody in here who snuck in here unawarely that Jesus is not your Lord. Well, I want to tell you, you don't have to leave the same way that you came. But all of us in here who gathered at the local church because Jesus is our Lord, there should be celebration in the house of prayer. Why in the world are we celebrating? Because it's no need of shouting and dancing and don't know why. The Bible says in Deuteronomy 16 and 1, when you celebrate the Passover, it's because you recognize that God is the only one who brought you out of Egypt. Now, this is a good moment to really thank God. Are there anybody here by show of hands that know God brought you out of Egypt? You got to read verse 1 because it said this. He just didn't bring some of us out. He brought some of us out at night. Y'all, I need somebody to help me here. Anybody had some night seasons in your life and you couldn't see your way? You couldn't find your way? But you can wave your hand and say, if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side. Lean over, grab your neighbor by the hand and say, you know he brought you out. Some of you would have been still in what you was in, but somebody hollered, the Lord snaps you out. I feel like having church, y'all. Dr. Taylor, that's why they used to sing the song through many dangers, toss, and snares. I've already. Y'all ain't going to help me here. Hit your neighbor and say, you know he brought you out. You didn't bring yourself out. And I need five witnesses to jump up on your feet and celebrate. He brought me out all right. Woo! I guess somebody spin around and say, every time I turn around, he keeps right on bringing me out. Y'all hear that? Those are people who celebrating because they recognize that if it had not been for God on my side, I'd still be in what I was in. But aren't you glad that it's on? It's not too sharp. I wish I had somebody wave and say, I was low past. I was on skid row. I was low on the rock. But he reached way down. I need some reach way down praises. Jump up on your feet and say, he talking about me. Y'all, I was lost. I was seeking deep in sin. Far from the peaceful soul. But God came and he... I wish I had somebody help me. Wave your hand and say, he brought me out. All right. Now, if you're not shouting, it could be, touch your neighbor and say, it could be that you're still in Egypt. You can't shout about coming out of Egypt if you're still in it. I know this is my amen calling. Amen. Hallelujah. Lean over and touch your neighbor and say, did you hear what the black boy said? You can't shout about coming out of Egypt if you're still in that. So the first reason, y'all going to make my blood pressure go up. I I feel something coming up on me here. The first reason they celebrated Passover, Dick and Scott, was because of celebration of the fact that every time you come to church, You ought to be thanking God for what he brought you out of. Now, some of y'all in here looking cute today, but you ain't always been cute, honey. Y'all, y'all ain't going to help me. You ain't always lived cute and drove cute. Touch your neighbor and say, boo-boo, you ain't always had the juice. Y'all ain't going to help me in this house. But touch your neighbor and tell him, look at him eyeball to eyeball and say, I don't look like, my God, what I've been through. I wish I had somebody help me in here. (laughs) 
Lay your hand on your bosom and say, he brought me out. I can't move from here. I'm waiting on y'all. Some of y'all ought to really think about what the Lord brought you out of. Say it again. He brought me out. Yes, sir. Somebody stump your feet and holler, yes, sir. Ooh, y'all going to make me lose my mind. Y'all better help me in this house. Slap and high five. Two people say, he brought me out. Hey. Y'all help me. Ah. Yeah, so you all up in the church, huh? Huh, Fred, you all up in church, you loud. What y'all loud for, huh? Can we sit here and be Presbyterian? Can we just sit here? It's too loud. It's too loud. Y'all too loud. It ain't loud at the club. Y'all help me here. <laughs> y'all quit, y'all. Shut your neighbor and say, they may be loud at the club, but tell them they can't be loud of me giving my God some praise. I dare somebody raise your head back and scream if you know that we ought to make some noise. My God, sitting there looking like something has died. My God, you got to learn how to celebrate God. Because he's always. <laughs> Lady Marquis, you know, you don't just come to church, celebrate. But the second reason you come to church, this going to hurt you. This is what Jesus is getting ready to get into the text. Write this down. It's to be cleansed. Oh, let's get quiet right about through here. I'm not talking about cleaning with terrific. I'm not talking about cleaning the yard. I'm not talking about cleaning to have clean bathrooms. But I am talking about not household cleaning, but mama heart cleaning. And I know some of y'all want to go around and hold on to your nasty heart. But I prophesy to you when you come in the house of prayer, you should offer your heart up to God in worship so he can cleanse it out. Y'all not going to say amen to this, but there's some stuff that happened to you this week where people tried to poison your heart, said things to you that you have held on to. You've been on the job and people hadn't done right. Somebody come here. Y'all help me here. Somebody say, come on, Jesus. And when you understand that God has put the local church in the earth for you to have a place to bring your recycling things to, this is a recycling place. And when you come to the house of prayer, you got to say what David said in Psalm 51, creating me a clean heart and renew. Somebody lay hands and say, Lord, I need to get right for a leaf. I've been tripping all week. I'm ready to slap somebody. Y'all ain't going to help me up in here. I'm ready to pay vengeance for vengeance. God, you better hold me up, God. But I come to say, Father, I stretch my hand to thee. No other help I know. Oh. Touch two people besides say, I got to clean up what I messed up. I, I got to get it right with God before I leave. I, I can't leave carrying these burdens. My God, I can't leave carrying this heartache. I, I come to give it to Jesus. And I ask you, my brothers and sisters, is that the reason why you're stoic coming to church sometimes? Because you really have no intention for the Lord to clean your heart? Maybe you just want to leave and stay like you are. It amazes me how people come to the local church and, and come into worship and leave worse than they came. 
and I struggled with it. I said, God, is it the message? Is my preaching boring? My, is the music not right? He said, no, 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 son. He said, no, no, no. He said, that's because when people come to worship, they only give me lip service. But what they do is they tuck their heart away from me and tell me, don't touch my heart, God. I want to hold on to being nasty. I want to hold on to my bad attitude. I want to hold on to my unforgiving heart. But I need somebody in here who is really real, who really come to the house of prayer, because you know it is the house of God, and you know that it is impossible to be in the presence of Jehovah and not change. And I come to minister to you, look up here at me, I'm coming to get you today. Sometime when you come to the house of prayer, you have to make up your mind that you don't bring boxing gloves with God because he'll knock you out. What you ought to bring is spandex so you can wrestle him. Y'all. When Jacob got to the house of prayer, he started to wrestle with God. See, when you wrestle with God, you're saying, now, I'm trying to change. But, Lord, you know if I change, I can't revert back to cousin folk because I can do that. And, 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 and you want me to change and stuff, put this liquor down. What I'm going to do when I'm lonely and I'm insecure and that liquor, that liquor helps me. It helps me have joy. Y'all, y'all well, what am I going to do when my friends forsake me and I can't roll that bud up and... What if y'all ain't gonna help me here? What am I going to do if if I can't if I can't use what I got? What I y'all not gonna help me, Lord? What am I gonna do? And the Lord saying, "Give it to me and let me cleanse it." Some of us don't want to be cleansed because we believe that can't nobody help us but us. So I need to hold on. Dr. Taylor, to what I have, because I never know when I need to use it against these jokers. Because, see, when God cleanses you, he don't let you reach for who you used to be. He teaches you what he wants you to be. I dare somebody take your heart like this and lift it up and say, here's my heart, Lord. I lift it up. Cleanse my soul. Cleanse my heart. Change my emotions. Take away my sadness. Take away my anger. I want to be right. I want to be whole. I got to be saved. Jesus arrived at the Passover with expectation. Because sometimes when you arrive with expectation, other folks arrive with evil. Y'all better come on ride with me. Write this down. It's in the text. Those who arrive at the house of God with evil. See, that's why sometimes you got to have your mind made up before you get here. Because you may be sitting next to on the Uh-oh, I done got in trouble. Sitting on the road with somebody who didn't come with expectation. They come with evil. How do I know the scripture says that when Jesus looked into the temple, there were three kinds of other people that were there that were not praisers. He says, number one, there were people there who was trying to sell something. Then number two, not only did you have sellers, you had sitters. And then thirdly, you had exchangers. Say that with me, church. There were three types of people. Sellers, sitters, and exchangers. What in the world was sellers? Sellers simply means, if you're making a note, it's to hand over something in exchange for money. I'm only at church to get some money. Simply means, Brother Robert, that's a take mentality. Y'all do know that uh, when the lights are on, bugs do come. And the light of the bright, the more bugs you have. Come on, some of you country people should have said Amen. Sometimes you got to turn the porch light to go in the house. <laughs> Y'all ain't going to say amen to this. And there are people who hang around the light. 
but they ain't nothing but bugs. They don't want to change. They just come so they can get or take something away that don't belong to them. It amazes me that not only did they have sellers, but they had number two sitters. Sitters signified that I, listen to this, will remain the same like I came. There are people who come to the house of prayer and sit there and they're going to leave the same way that they came. Don't change me. I'm not going to sing. I'm not going to touch my neighbor. I am not going to lift my hands. I better not jump up and spin around. And everybody not jumping up ain't because they got bad knees. It's because they got a bad heart. So you had sellers. Y'all help me. They had sitters. Then they had exchangers. Exchangers are people who are simply saying this. I'm not giving nothing till I get something. Meaning I'm not coming to give anything till I get something. This is what is called performance-based. It's, it's almost like, uh, uh, I won't use that analogy. It's almost like going to a boxing show. It's almost like going to the circus. You see, you go and you say, I'm not paying my money until I see something. Or if I pay my money, it's because I make sure I want to see what I want to see. And that's for people who are performance-based. That's why sometimes people in churches have to give the offering after the message. Because the preacher has to perform first. And then I will determine his tip after he dance and shout and give y'all help me here. And he better up. Oh. <laughs> and they be doing this, do it one more time, Reverend. I'll change this dollar for 10. Touch your name and say, I ain't on no pole. I don't need you running no ones. Y'all help me here. This is the house of prayer. I'm not giving based on performance. I'm giving because he's performed for me. Anybody had your bills paid this week? He did it. Y'all help me here. Anybody got a job? Other folks got laid off? He did it. I thought y'all was going to help me through here. But church is not performance-based. It's not performance-based. It should be praise-based. Uh, meaning that I did not come because somebody owed me. I came because I owe him. Do I have any I owe him worshipers in here? I just need about 10 to jump open feet and say, I owe him everything. As good as God has been to me, I owe him a praise. I dare you take 30 seconds and scream like you owe him. So I got to get out of here. Somebody holler, I owe him. I owe him. I should be worse off, but I owe him. He's been good to me, and I owe him. He put food on the table. I owe him. He put shelter over my head. I owe him. So what Jesus declared, he says, what I'm going to have to do. When he saw those selling and uh, he saw those sitting and he saw those making an exchange. What he decided to do, he went over in the corner, Sister Beecher, and he started to get him some rope. Y'all don't know, understand this, because sometimes y'all. My mama told me, when I can't make you do good by yourself, I got a way, y'all, y'all ain't going to say amen. I got a way I can help you. Touch your neighbor, say, neighbor, when you sell, tell them, neighbor, when you sit there, say, neighbor, when you make an exchange, tell them God will bring his whip out. Some theologians declare, some theologians declare that the reason Jesus brings his whip out is because he's mean. Jesus is not mean at all. And I believe I've got some witnesses that say Jesus is not mean. The second thought is why would he use a whip? That's because we have been brainwashed to believe 
that whips are for the buttocks of humans. But whips were never intended for humans. They were intended to whip animals and asses. Y'all y'all ain't going to say amen to that. But the Bible says when you want an ass to move. Y'all I'm saying when you want an ass to move. I'm not talking about y'all. But when you want an ass to move. What the rider has to do. He has to. Y'all, y'all better come get me here. And, and that's the difference between the saints and the animals. There's some animals in here that need a good whooping y'all and and god told me to tell you my brothers and sisters uh, when god gets his whip out uh, it's not for the saints uh, it's to whoop the ants brother harold Grandma come in there with that, with that switch. <laughs> Grandma, how long? I'm get you. If you done right, you wasn't afraid of the whip. This is what heaven's like. When Jesus comes, there are two kinds of people sitting on the couch. Y'all help me? It's the worshipers and the wicked. When they see grandma, they say, oh, grandma home. She, hey, grandma. See, because the kid that still speaks to grandma when she got a whip, no, I ain't done nothing. Y'all ain't going to say amen to this. But the kid, who knows, y'all? His hand been in the cookie jar. He forgot to make his bed. He gets nervous. Y'all ain't going to say amen. Because he recognized that the whoop is for him. So Jesus takes the whip, brother Arthur Johnson, and the Bible declares, "Uh uh-huh. The Bible says that when Jesus cracked the whip, he told all of the animals and asses, y'all get out of here. Y'all ain't going to say, man, my God, if you're not here to give, you're not here to serve, if you're not here to praise the Lord, God's gotten his whip out for your behind. And if you never read the Bible, you would think Jesus was the only one who used the whip. But the whip belongs in the hands of the pastor. And if a pastor don't whip the saints, not the saints, the ants. I said the ants. I said the ants. If the pastor don't whip the ants, then the ants will believe they're going to heaven like the saints. Come on, y'all help me here. Ride with me. I'm almost through here. Such a neighbor say, he's almost through. Stay with him. Stay with him. Stay with him. Stay with him. Jesus was not the only one that, that, that cut up at church. The Bible says that when Eli in 1 Samuel chapter 3, yes, began to cut up in 1 Samuel chapter 3, the priest did not bring out his whip. And his sons were in the church. And they were sleeping with all of the women in the church. And so what God got mad and told Eli, since you don't want to use your whip, I'm going to take your life. Send Samuel in there and says, since you won't whip, I'm whipping you out of the tabernacle. Because the whip belongs in the hand of the presbyteria. Just like a whip belongs in the hands of the parents. Spell the rod. But if you beat his, you shall deliver him from the pits of hell. I'm reading the Bible. Don't y'all look at me like that. Touch your neighbor and say, keep your whip in your hand. Nehemiah 13 and 8, write that down. The Bible says, when Nehemiah returned from building the wall to Jerusalem, When he got there, Deacon Scott, he saw Tobiah. Y'all know what Tobiah did? He went and got his trailer and pulled his trailer home up on the church's lawn and was living off of the... He had plugged... Y'all know what Negroes do. He had plugged... Y'all help me. His plug into the church's electricity. 
And there's some of y'all that act niggerish at church too. Y'all ain't gonna say y'all got quiet here, taking stuff don't belong to you. That ain't your screwdriver, put it back in there. Y'all ain't gonna that ain't your lawnmower, put it back in there. Y'all. And the Bible says when Nehemiah walked in there, the Bible says that Nehemiah, the Bible says, read it when you get home, 13 and 8. The Bible says he went in there and he went in that trailer and kicked the door in and started tearing all the Tobias stuff out, throwing it in the grass and said, This you get your y'all ain't gonna help me here. And he got him out of the temple court because somebody needs to be able to separate the saints from the ain'ts. And I believe, saints, that if ain't no souls coming in, then some sitters need to go out. <laughs> Touch your neighbor and say, if you can't help me, don't hurt me. <laughs> Sucking up all this air, you ain't going to give nothing, ain't going to serve nowhere. Touch your neighbor and say, whip, 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 baby, whip, Yes. I'm closing when I tell you Jesus is teaching us that the house of God is not meant for profit, not for performance. He closes by saying this, it's meant for prayer. And if you don't have a prayer life, then saints of God, you won't find any zeal in the house of God. It won't bother you that stuff is out of place. Don't bother you to walk over paper. Don't, don't bother you that you come out of it was broken. You, it don't even bother you to tell somebody about it that is broken. You know why? Because when you're disconnected from God, the things that matter to him won't matter to you. He said, y'all have turned the house into a marketplace? Y'all up in here passing business cards around on how you can benefit from each other's life? I'm selling chicken. You come by the house. I got two pounds of chicken. I, I sell it to you. I take $10 off of you. I'm selling cakes. You want a cake? I sell you a cake, $15, $20. Everybody try and make a dollar. And the house of God had become a place of merchandise. Everybody tricking in the church. trying to get what they want, but leaving the house of God and ain't gave the house of God nothing. Ain't gave, won't give a dollar, won't serve nowhere. If I'm carrying a chair in my back here, you walk by me, y'all ain't gonna say me like this is my house and not yours. Jesus says, I see a problem. They're pursuing prophets, not, not pursuing prayer. This shall be called. I need help here. Y'all ready? What it say? And this shall be called. And when you chastise people in the house of God, they get mad. Look what they said to Jesus. I'm closing. They said this. Who, who gave him the authority? I'm reading the Bible, y'all. This ain't personal. This is in the Bible. Who gives him the authority to go whipping everything that ain't saintly? And the disciples began to remember what he said. Saints of God, I am telling you that you got to learn how to be in love with the house of prayer. When I was coming up, the house of prayer meant everything to me. If you haven't never been to a place of suffering, been to a place of, of witnessing domestic violence. Where can you go and get some peace? Oh my God. But I didn't run from church. My mother would come by and pick me up. At times, my dad was unstable and wouldn't let my mother go to church. You ain't going tonight. Not going. Be upset. Now he ain't going, but he don't, he don't want her to go. Violence, because he tips it turvy. Smoking him a little this and smoking him a little that. He's intoxicated on himself. He's mean. He's, he's trifling. Now he wants to take it out on my mother. You can't go to church. So as a little boy, I'm going through all of these things. And guess where I could go? Thank God I didn't go to the crack house. 
Woo. Y'all, I'm trying to tell you, you got to have a love for the local church. Thank God that the dope man didn't get his hands on me. <laughs> Thank God that my uncles didn't put me in the car to teach me how to lust for women and drink beer all the time. But here come this whole lady. <laughs> Oh, Mother Ann Harrison coming to the neighborhood to pick up the little boy. She said, I heard Ann couldn't make it tonight, but Michael, I come to get you. <laughs> Didn't have a musician, but I just sat over there and played the drums. Because I found out there is safety in the house of prayer. Oh, my God, in days where my heart was hurting, they brought me to the altar. Said, come here, young man, you don't have any joy lay hands on me. I didn't always understand what was going on in the church, but God blessed me at the house of prayer. Taught me how to pray. Taught me how to call on Jesus. Taught me how to love. Son, get them chairs over there. Taught me how to serve old people. That's why I got over 24 mothers, because they taught me how to have a love and respect for elders. All because they taught me that there is a zeal that you got to have for the house of God, and when you have a zeal, you will have the same love I have for the love for the local church you will have one too because if it wasn't for the local church how many can say if it wasn't for the local church I'll be worse off than where I am now standing all over I got more word but I'm out of time put somebody's hand in your hand and say thank God for the local come on embrace me <laughs>